Hello students, this is your English lesson. In this lesson, we are going to read a story, The Ambassador's Disguise from Oxford Modern English. Let's get started. First of all, we will read words to know. Ambassador, an official of the highest rank sent by one country to another as a representative. Boast. To praise or speak highly about yourself. Club. A heavy stick with a thick end used as a weapon. Lance. A long wooden weapon with a pointed steel head used by horsemen. Tribute. A payment made by one ruler to another. Let's go to the reading. Once in the pa palace of Vladimir. A great Russian prince of Kiev. All the nobles were making boosts. One noble boosted of his strength, another showed of his wisdom, others boosted of their wealth or their trusted horses. One noble, Steve Gardevich, said nothing at all. He sat with a dreamy look on his face. Prince Vladimir noticed this and asked, Why are you silent? Steve, have you nothing to say? Great Prince replied, Steve, I have nothing to boost of except my wife, Katrina. She is young and beautiful, brave and more skillful than, an, than any warrior here. She can shoot with a bow, sing like a nightingale, and enchant everyone with her heart, and no one here will ever beat her at chess. Is that so? interrupted the prince. Yes, indeed, great prince, replied Steve. She could easily defeat all your nobles, and pardon me for saying so, great prince, but you are no match for her either. The prince became very angry when he heard this. He glared at stuff and said, You have gone too far this time. How dare you say that I am no match for your wife? The prince pointed a finger at Steve and turning to one of his guards said, Take this man away, throw him into the dungeon, give him oats and water, nothing more. Now go, the guard did as he was instructed. He threw Steve into a cold dark dungeon. The only light came from a small window with thick iron bars high up near the ceiling. All Steve could see was the sky. He sat on the cold stone floor feeling very sad. As night fell, Steve looking out of the window at the stars in the sky. Alas, he thought to himself, I have served the prince for nine years and this is how he repays me. I am sorry I heard the prince, but I only spoke the truth about my wife. I hope someone tells Katrina where I am. Katrina heard what had happened to her husband. She tried to visit him the following day, but the guards would not let her in. So she thought of a plan to rescue him. Katrina called together her band of 30 archers, 30 chess masters, and 30 musicians. She told them she needed their help to rescue her husband, and they agreed to help her. The next day, Katrina got ready. She wore a suit of armor with a helmet to cover her face. She carried a bow and some arrows, a club of steel, and a long lance. Perched on her left forearm was a falcon. She wanted a tall black horse. When her friends arrived, she set off for the palace, leading them. A short distance from the walls of the city, Katrina told her followers to wait. She rode by herself into the city and went to the great hall of the palace. All the people thought she was some great warrior. Of course, no one guessed she was a woman. Katrina bowed to Prince. Vladimir, I am the ambassador of the king of Greece, she announced. I have come to collect country, collect tribute from you. 
if you ref refuse to pay my army of 40000 men will attack your city prince waljimer trembled with fear give me time to think ambassador he begged time is precious roared the ambassador i want your answer now pay the tribute or we will attack if you cannot pay then give me your niece the baba to be my wife the prince knees the baba was a beautiful and clever girl the prince loved her dearly there was nothing in the world he would do to harm her at this time the baba was sitting in the great hall watching and listening to all that was said the prince asked her beloved niece only you can save us what are we to do dear uncle replied the baba i obey you in all matters by i but i cannot marry a woman this ambassador is not a man but a woman see how the ambassador talks and walks look at the ring marks on her del delicate fingers you may be right agreed the prince but what can we do to find out if the ambassador is a man or a woman a little later prince vladimir spoke to the ambassador dear ambassador said the prince my niece is used to people with great skills i can only allow her to marry you if you can show us you are skillful come show us if you can play the harp a harp was brought and katrina began to play it and sing the nobles were enchanted with the music but no one could tell whether the ambassador was a man or a woman then the prince asked the ambassador to play a game of chess the prince was the best player in the land he believed if the ambassador was a woman she would lose much to the prince's astonishment the ambassador won the game the prince turned to the baba this is no woman he whispered i am sure she is replied the baba the prince thought for a while then said to the ambassador let us now try some archery the prince the ambassador and the nobles all went outside into a a large courtyard a golden ring was set up at one end and the prince placed a steel knife behind it forced the prince shoot three arrows at the target the arrows passed through the ring but did not hit the knife then the ambassador shot an arrow at the ring the arrow hissed like a snake as it flew it passed through the ring and cut itself into two against the edge of the knife the prince was now sure that the ambassador was a man but the baba still did not agree with him i shall not marry a woman she cried the ambassador may shoot arrows just like a man but he talks walks and sits just like a woman the prince became angry you are being silly he said i order you to marry the ambassador go prepare for your wedding the baba ran off in tears the prince told the ambassador that his bride would soon be ready but katrina decided to put an end to this game she said to the prince before the wedding let us fight each other let us see who is stronger trembling at this suggestion the prince said ambassador there is no one here who is your match oh dear replied katrina is there no one i was looking forward to some sport perhaps there is a brave warrior in your dungeon who could fight me yes yes this there is said the prince smiling and remembering stav gordinovich he immediately opened ordered his guard to bring stav from the dungeon soon stav gordinovich arrived he was ordered to put on a suit of armor and mount a horse when stav was ready he and the ambassador galloped into a nearby field all the nobles went to watch the great fight the ambassador and stav rode towards each other and then leapt from horses to horse and leapt from horse to horse they threw their steel clubs in the air and then rode straight towards the prince 
The terrible ambassador of Greece took off her helmet and threw it at the feet of the prince. Katrina's beautiful long hair fell down over her shoulders. The nobles gasped in surprise. Great prince laughed, Katrina. I have rescued my husband from your dungeons. You must agree he was right to boost off my skills. Now, farewell. And laughing at Together, Katrina and staff called him which road of it. Now come to the exercises. Comprehension. Answer the following questions. A. What was the Russian nobles boasting about? Answer. The Russian nobles were boasting of their strength, fame, wisdom, wealth, trusted horses and themselves. B. Why was the prince angry with Stev? The answer. The prince was angry with Steve for saying that he, the prince, was no match for his wife Katrina. C. Who did Katrina take with her to Kiev? Answer. Katrina took a band of 30 archers, 30 chess masters, and 30 musicians with her to Kiev. D. What did the Greek ambassador want from the prince? Answer. The Greek ambassador wanted the prince to pay a tribute, failing which he was to agree to let the ambassador marry his niece, Zabawa. E. Why did the prince think that Katrina was a man? Answer. The prince thought that Katrina was a man because of the clothes she was wearing and because she behaved like a man. F. Who was Zabawa? Why did she refuse to marry the Greek ambassador? Answer. Zabawa was niece of Prince Vladimir. She refused to marry the Greek ambassador because he thought he was not a man at all but a woman. G. How did Katrina get starved out of the dungeon? Answer. Katrina got starved out of the dungeon by challenging the prince to a fight. The prince was frightened to fight, but when Katrina asked if there was no brave warrior in the dungeon to fight her, the prince remembered Star Gordinovich and had him brought out of the dungeon. This question is more difficult. Discuss it first. How do you think each of the following characters feel at the end of the story? Give reasons for your answers. Katrina and Star Gordinovich. Answer. Katrina and Star Gordinovich happy. They are both free and they are laughing as they leave. Zabawa. Zabawa relieved, annoyed with the prince. She was crying when the prince ordered her to marry the ambassador and prince did not believe her when she said that the ambassador was a woman. Prince Vladimir. Prince Vladimir shocked, defeated, embarrassed. He was wrong about many things. He knew he would lose against Katrina. He had been fooled by Katrina. Question number two. Who do you think said or would have said the following? A. I wish I had not boosted about her. Answer. Stav Gordinovich. B. I will ride to the palace alone. Answer. Katrina. C. I wonder who this great warrior is. Answer. The prince and all the people of the kingdom. D. Now I can get rid of staff. Answer. Prince Vladimir. E. I knew she would save me. Answer. Stav Gordinovich. Working with words. This is the man who met me on the road. This is the map which helped me to find the cave. This is the path which took me to the cave. This is the dog that guarded the cave. This is the treasure which I brought back to you. Find the meanings of these words, then use them in sentences of your own. Word harp, meaning a musical instrument that has many strings stretching from the top of the bottom of a frame. Pardon, meaning sorry, excuse. Archer, meaning a person 
who shoots with a bow and arrow at a target. Interrupt meaning to stop somebody spe speaking or doing something. C part learning about language. Verbs underline the verbs in the following. Once upon a time there was a crocodile who lived in the river. Was verb lived verb. One day he was swimming along in the warm water. Was swimming verb. He felt very hungry. Felt verb that morning and wanted some food. Wanted verb. Suddenly he saw a boy on the bank. Saw verb the boy was fishing in the stream was fishing verb and did not see the crocodile did see verb the crocodile crept towards the boy crept verb subject and predicate divide the following into subject and predicate a my father climbed a very high mountain yesterday. My father subject and the rest of the part is predicate. My sister went with him although it was snowing. My sister subject and the rest of the sentence is predicate. My father slipped on a rock and hurt his ankle. My father is subject of the sentence and the rest of the part is predicate. My sister bound up the ankle with a piece of cloth. My sister is subject and the rest of the part is predicate. She helped me, helped my father to come down the mountain. She subject and the rest of the part is predicate. Our family was very glad to see them again. Our family is subject and the rest of the part is predicate. Number two, find the subject and predicate in the following. Old buildings and mosques are to be found all over Pakistan. Here, old buildings and mosques are subjects and the rest is predicate. The man who lives next door is my grandfather. The man is subject and the rest of the part is predicate. My father and mother and both my brothers will attend the wedding. My father and mother and both my brothers are subjects of the sentence. And the rest of the part is predicate. She does not live with her family. She is subject. And the rest of the part is predicate. Akil and Tom wrote to Faraz last week. Akil and Tom are subjects and the rest of the part is predicate. The apples and peaches have become ripe. Apples and peaches are subjects of the sentence and the rest of the part is predicate. Thanks for listening. For new videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you like my videos, please share and like.